Today we're talking about MMO economies and namely the difference between Elder Scrolls Online and Albion Online or EVE Online. I thought it was interesting that Albion Online had such a realistic economy. It's just super cool because everything in the game is player made, player crafted. Everything is destroyable and there's a full loot on death system. So you'll have weapons continually being destroyed and you'll have a supply and demand system, which is pretty realistic in that game. Same thing for EVE Online. And those are really fun games to a point. The only problem is you wind up having a lot of griefers and you have a lot of gankers and you have in practice a situation where you can't really have a good solo experience because if you go out and you try to gather resources, you're going to be killed and you can't really take good gear out because you'll potentially lose it. And even if you gear up for a fair fight, you're not going to have a fair fight because you're going to wind up in a 10v1 situation. So there's so many reasons why the actual experience in a game like Albion Online can be negative instead of positive. And the reason why that is, is because there really isn't any non-combat track in the game. You can make weapons and you can make armor and then you can go out and you can fight for more money, basically. But there isn't anything to do with currency in Albion Online or EVE Online other than buy a bigger ship or get stronger armor or get better weapons. So it's just a fighting game. That's all it really is. It's a fighting game or a numbers game to try to get more money so that you can get more weapons. It's kind of like the economy of gang violence in the inner city. Sure, there could be something cool about it, but at some point you probably want to leave the ghetto because if all there is to life is fighting so that the numbers can be higher and the fights are probably not fair and you're just in that cycle then where's the fun there's the fun of competition but you don't have fair competition and then there's maybe the fun of earning money but if you're not using that money to fight other players, then what's the point of the money? Because there's nothing else in the game to buy other than resources for weapons and weapons for fighting. So, in a sense, even though those games have really realistic economies, the, the lack of an end game economy that is centered around something other than combat makes the games feel empty. If you look at a game like Elder Scrolls Online, meanwhile, it does not have a super realistic economy in the sense of everything being crafted by players. Players do craft things, but it's a theme park MMO, so the economy's not super realistic compared to a full loot sandbox PvP driven MMO. But gold does have a sense of value to players in the game. And the reason for that is because you have things like player housing. So if you go to a guild store in Elder Scrolls Online you will find all sorts of different things that are listed in there for sale. And some of those things might be stuff like furnishing for housing. 
And that doesn't necessarily have any combat value. It doesn't have any value other than being something that people enjoy the appearance of. And so if it's rare and it looks cool, then you might have people spending a lot of in-game gold to buy it. And that's kind of like how real life works. In real life, people don't go down and collect raw materials so that they can craft them manually into weapons to fight other people with and then just engage in a warfare economy. That's not how a real society works. A real society will invest in things of a symbolic value or an aesthetic value or a social value. And those things play as important a role in the economy as more practical stuff. So the end result is that a theme park economy in an MMO, even though it has some aspects that are perhaps not realistic, may be more enjoyable to participate in than a full loot sandbox. Because a community which is centered around fighting over weapons is not going to be as fun to be part of as a community that is interested in home furnishings. You know, you might go to the gun shop once in a while if you're a gun person, but there's a lot more appeal in going to a Target store, probably, than going to the gun shop. You'll go to the gun shop if you want a gun. You go to the Target store and just look around and get stuff you wanted, right? Because it appeals to a more broad type of interests than just the gun shop. So that's great. Gun shops, there's nothing wrong with a gun shop. But imagine how not fun it would be if the only thing that existed was gun shops and stores that sold stuff for sword play. I mean, come on. A world where all you had was weapon sh weapon shops and and uh, and uh, dealers of weaponry that 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 just would would not be a fun world to immerse yourself in. So that's why I kind of have drifted away from some of these full loot PvP games that I really like the idea of. And, and shifted more into theme park games that have some aspects of player-driven economies that I can tinker with, but they have a more well-rounded economy of players themselves, people who engage in stuff like role-play and um, player housing and people who may just buy a gear set simply because they like the way it looks and they want to customize their character's appearance in the game. There's so many different things that you can do in a game that has a lot of different types of activities that the player base engages in. In Elder Scrolls Online, you have people that might use the game as a backdrop for something like a digital version of a Dungeons and Dragons campaign. You have people who play the game in character, immersed in the lore of the world. You have people who do uh, stuff like um, ERP and more fringe kind of stuff that is, you know, it's not something that I really would want to be part of, but it's also something that people do that adds to 
a diversity of the type of player base that you might find in the game. You have all different kinds of people. Then you have folks who are just normal PvPers and they're not even interested in the quests and the you know the stories in the game. And you have people who play the game primarily for for house decorating. So then when you have all these different items for sale, you have all different kinds of people. Folks are just trying to min-max a character, people who are trying to do map completion, people who are trying to do PvP and Cyrodiil. And so there's a lot of different motivators that can impact how the economy works and what sells for a lot, what sells for a little, fluctuations in market prices, and you have that nice mix between the practical value of an item based on just the, the value of a commodity, if you will, and then the perceived value of an item when people just want something because they think it's cool. And, and sometimes, sometimes the value of an item can spot skyrocket just because of its perceived value, too. Or because a buyer just doesn't know the value of an item and they're willing to pay comparatively a lot just to get something right now because they found it in the guild trader they happen to be looking at and they don't mind if it's not a really good deal they're not going to shop around because they just see it and it's a price they're willing to pay which is interesting because eso has these segregated guild traders so every guild has its trader and each trader is in a specific place in the game world and it's not connected to a central market or auction house so in that way elder scrolls online i think has the most realistic economy economy of any mmo because it replicates the kind of experience you would actually have if you were trying to buy something in a world similar to that of Tamriel. It's basically just a matter of going out and finding uh, finding different traders and shopping around to find what you're looking for. And uh, if you want to make money, you have to know what sells and you have to have a certain level of patience and you have to pay attention. If you want to get good deals, you have to have a, an eye for, for what a good deal looks like. And, uh, and so in that way, I, you know, I, I think that the I think that the guild trading system in ESO is is pretty cool. It's something I really didn't like when I started playing the game because I didn't understand it initially. I didn't have any mods to start off with, so without add-ons and without understanding what it's all about, initially it was a bit of a turnoff because it just seemed crazy to have a MMO without a central auction house. But then I think about games like Albion Online, where each city has its own unique marketplace with its own special its own prices and things like that and that's something i've missed in other games so in a way elder scrolls online does have a little bit of that vibe by dividing up trading into individual guild traders ultimately no game has a perfect economy and maybe trying to create the perfect economy just doesn't work because once you create a total free market economy that's not regulated in any way, then you have manipulation and you have people who exploit it so that the average player can't enjoy their experience. So as much as it's fun to have a free market in a game, it's also necessary to have some variety of regulation so that you don't just have non-stop griefing. It's kind of like Final Fantasy XIV. It has this, it has a system of player housing where each individual house is unique 
So if you want to buy a house in that game, you have to actually buy that house. And if all the houses are sold, then you can't buy a house because there aren't any available. So that's turned into a wild competition for house plots in this virtual world. And a lot of people can't get what they want. Well, that's it's cool as an idea, but it's not very cool when you install a game that's supposed to be fun and then you find out that getting a virtual house in a video game is almost as hard as buying a real house in real life. Whereas in Elder Scrolls, you have no such thing. You just go to an instance and you get the house you want and you could start playing the game for the first time today and you could probably buy a house in the game the same day. That's what you wanted to do. So it's not gate kept in that kind of a way. There's a lot of a lot of mechanics like that where, you, where it's great to have a certain level of realism, but it's not great to have a pseudo realistic system in a game that ultimately compromises the player's ability to have a positive experience. It's, uh, you know, another good example would be in Anno 1800. There's a lot of realistic logistics systems in play in Anno 1800. It's a very realistic game in many ways. But one thing that's not realistic is that once you have a commodity in the warehouse, it can be accessed immediately, instantaneously from any warehouse on the same island not realistic but then think about what would happen if that mechanic didn't exist if you tried to make it more realistic you could easily go down the path of creating something like city skylines level of traffic jams where the city management shifts from logistics to traffic management and that wouldn't be fun so that's where I think I think in game design, there's a lot to be said for the importance of striking a reasonable balance between something that feels realistic and immersive and something which also acknowledges that the reason why we play games is to escape reality to a point. Not to create something that's so realistic that we also bake in the elements that aren't fun or are a barrier to a good experience. It's like a MMO. If you were going to talk about grind, well, grinding in a game is fun. It's nice to have a sense of you do something for a period of time and then the more you do it, the more experience you gain and the more uh, proficiency you obtain by investing a significant amount of time into something. That's great. But it's not great if you add so much grind to the game that it takes an actual human lifetime to make progress on your character. That's not fun. Because if you install a game and you want to play it, you want to have a good experience today. You don't want to have to invest 2,000 hours into the game just so that you can finish the tutorial. And that's where you there, there's just a, a need for balance in all elements of design. And I think from the perspective of a player trying to figure out what do you want to play, sometimes you have to realize that what you want isn't necessarily what you think you want. You might think you want a super realistic game where there's high stakes and you can fight to the top at the expense of others and it's super competitive, but do you really want that? Or do you really want something that's a little bit more chill and casual? reality is you potentially just want something that's a bit, a bit more casual because everybody likes the idea of being a badass until they are on the losing side of that proposition and somebody else is the one that is triumphing at their expense and then it's not fun anymore and then they suddenly realize you know they didn't want to be 
ganked 20 times in a row in a 10v1 fight just so that they could have the sense of a realistic sink and faucet in a supply and demand virtual economy. I couldn't say how many posts I've seen about EVE Online where people say that they've had a really miserable experience because whenever they get a good ship, they don't want to take it out because they don't want to lose it. And then it's just not fun to be ganged up on and destroyed by more powerful whale players. Like that's a that's a very common experience people have. And and sometimes even the people who put a lot of time into the game, they're not having a good time. They're trying to I guess prove to themselves that they're enjoying the experience, but the reality is it's a game that adds stress to your life instead of a game that adds joy to your life. So it's it's important to really ask yourself what 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 do you enjoy in a gaming experience and then make your selection based on whether it's a net positive and understand that sometimes you do have to give up a little bit of your perfect vision of what might be what, what might seem the most fun in a video game trailer in favor of something that actually is a little bit more fun in actual practice in any case, whatever game you choose to play, good luck on your adventure. Thank you for watching.